five, four, three, two. Expressive Arts Project. Um, today we're going to uh, art making Expressive Arts Way um, with faculty medical school. So I'll start with some introductions and then I'll hand it off to our. So I'll start with myself. I'm Mary Roberts, program director and I'm also a director of our art health program. Expressive Arts Project is gratefully a part of, and none of this is possible without donors from MOCA, a Museum of Contemporary Art, um, where we host our live face-to-face um, -face sessions, and um, from those supporters of EVMS. So I just want to express gratitude um, to all those um, donors. Um, from the beginning. Um, I'd also like to express gratitude to um, Carrie Pascarello and Eleanor Lampel, owners of faculty with us. Um, and today they'll be answering any questions or responding to comments on Facebook Live. An art therapist and summit counseling in Norfolk. Um, and so certainly offers direct um, art therapy services. That. Carrie Pascarello is a staff member who is, a, in effect, an assistant director of Arts for Optimal Health, and she'll be posting resources um, to link to um, all the anniversary and remembrance events um, in Virginia Beach that will be happening today and tomorrow. And um, she'll also post our Healing Beat Expressive Arts Project links that if you want to engage in expressive art making to Process your experiences, direct or indirect, related to the mass shooting on May 31st. They're welcome you to join us. Um, so I'm going to um, start with asking faculty to introduce themselves, and um, I'll start with Matthew. Matthew, it. <laughs> Mike, got to turn your mic on, Matthew. All right. We're human. All right. Thanks. Someone else is turning it on and off for me. Okay. Hi, I'm Matthew Bernier, Associate Professor in the Graduate Art Therapy and Counseling Program, and I've been with the program for 30 years, and I'm really happy to be here um, to share some ideas about creative and expressive arts. Thanks, Matthew. Eileen. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Eileen Douglas. I'm an assistant professor in the Graduate Art Therapy and Counseling Program at EVMS. I have been working with EVMS for about three years, and I'm um, just very um, honored to be with everybody today and to honor the memory of, um, you know, Virginia Beach and the lives that were lost last year. Thanks, Eileen. I'll ask Zana, please introduce me. Hi, I'm Susanna. I'm a second year program for graduate therapy. I just moved to the before just prior to the event land. It's just an honor to be here to memory. Um. Thanks, Susanna. Um, now I'd like to introduce our facilitators for the Healing BB Expressive and Expressive Arts Project. Both of these facilitators are art therapists, and um, they facilitate expressive arts with um, an art therapy mindset. Um, to engage the community healing. 
and um, the kind of mission of the um, project is really to create community space, community engagement, and partnership that causes healing, um, inspires change. And um, so I'll just um, turn it over to um, Jeffrey, and then Jeffrey, if you'll um, turn it over to Lee. Great, thank you, Mary. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Thompson. I'm assistant professor of art therapy at the Graduate Art Therapy and Counseling Program at EVMS. And to myself with Lisa Thomas, who I will introduce you to next. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> um, have been um, facilitating the Healing VB groups here at the painting studio in Mocha um, since the beginning of the fall in last year. So again, I've been at uh, EVMS for about five years, and uh, likewise, I echo the sentiments expressed already that it's an honor to be part of this program with everybody here today, especially on the eve of the anniversary of the mass shooting in Virginia Beach last year. Um, we're um, thrilled to be able to still offer Healing VB uh, groups for community members online, and that's been, I think, going uh, really quite well, given the, the additional stressful situation of uh, coping with COVID-19, and especially during the stay-at-home uh, phase of that. Um, so uh, I'm not going to say anything else right now, and I'll hand you over to Lisa Thomas. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm a recent graduate um, from the Graduate Art Therapy and Counseling Program. I'm a co-facilitator um, along with Jeffrey and together in providing like a safe space for individuals affected by the mass shooting. So we're happy to be back in the studio um, to just continue providing that safe space for individuals that were affected by the mass shooting. We're happy to be here for the anniversary as it comes up. So. Um, Honored to be here with everyone. Great, thank you, Lisa. Um, so, just as an intro, I wanted to just um, really, really touch on that today is the the eve of the anniversary of the the mass shooting, and recognize that um, people may be uh, approaching that with um, anxiety or uh, heightened feelings that could really uh, run the gamut from um, depression, anxiety, uh, frustration. And in preparation for doing this today, I was thinking about my own experiences, and I would share something related to this. Um, I'm relatively new to uh, Virginia Beach, and that horrendous mass shooting last year definitely affected me. But I did not have the, the, the um, deep personal involvement that you know, lifelong residents of this community had, obviously. Um, so I, I liken it to my own experience um, of September 11th in 2001. When, and I think of the approaching anniversaries of 9-11 of and the, the fear, the apprehension, the apprehension the, um, you can have such hyper arousal uh, approaching an, an anniversary that you, we can just feel like we we have a physical illness. Even uh, it's very sometimes it's very difficult to concentrate on anything else to really grasp uh, what is happening. And usually, uh, the end of the day, always returning to the question why, um, why, why did this happen? And I think that's a. In, in certainly, certainly in mass traumas, I think, and even in, in even in individual traumas, that's always a big question that there may never be an answer to that, at least not an answer that really uh, provides any kind of resolution. So with that kind of uh, overarching um, anxiousness approaching an anniversary, I, I pause and appreciate the community here in Virginia Beach and the wider Hampton Roads area to, to, to pause and to recognize that people may be feeling that. And um, we want to provide space for 
expression and a, a attention to, to any feelings that come up for any, anybody in the community that, that feels able to participate in our healing VB sessions. And Lisa and I have been really fortunate enough to um, witness uh, ma many people who are um, really in shining during uh, these, the studio sessions that we run for expressive arts and, and healing. And that's a wonderful thing. And I think we've gathered here today to share some of our ideas related to that. So uh, why don't we uh, just go around uh, one by one and maybe you know, share some artwork or um, some, demonstrate some painting technique or uh, expressive technique that could be useful for people that uh, are tuned in live on uh, Facebook. And I, before I go, I wanted to echo Mary's uh, uh, sentiment, uh, thank you for all the people that donated to make this program uh, possible because um, community effort is really that. It really is takes a community to do that and to accomplish things. So we appreciate everybody that is in, involved. So thank you again. And um, I'm, I'm really interested to hear more about uh, Matthew. Uh, I, I Re uh, yesterday we were talking and uh, I really enjoyed uh, that particular message that you that you shared yesterday Matthew if you could maybe okay. pick up on that or or add any any other um, any other gem or pearl of wisdom that <laughs> <laughs> that would be really okay. beneficial for people watching it would be great thank you well I have uh, two things on my mind and one is that although we are honoring um, being concerned about the anniversary of the mass shooting, we really have to not um, imagine we can so easily compartmentalize one event when we have series of other events also um, happening. And so certainly we're all in our um, stay at home um, isolation and um, or not, you know, um, concerns about COVID-19. Um, and right on top of that, um, we've got what's all in the news going on in Minneapolis. Um, so I have multiple concerns um, of what's happening in the world with people and, um, and uh, you know, uh, all the people who are experiencing all of these things, we're experiencing these things, you're experiencing these things. So I have lots of people in my head right now, people that I'm thinking about. Um, I've also, um, like playing with found materials and this whole idea of being in a home space, uh, making art. I really think about just grasping at what I have at hand and being creative with it and playing. And I think it's really important to think about um, using creativity and play to, to um, try to immerse yourself in that and, and take the seriousness of all these events um, and not necessarily make art only about those events, but know that they're in the back of your mind and you can actually put them to the side and decenter into the process of creation and play um, and allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to enjoy the experience, the soothing experience of art making. So one um, thing that's come to mind for me is actually is somewhat maybe more comical and that is this whole problem of uh, people not finding toilet paper in the stores. And, um, and so I latched on to these um, toilet paper tubes. And so I've been combining playing with the, the raw material with um, sculpting them. So I, I wet these tubes. I don't know if you can see that, um, but they get crunched, they get wet and crunched and you begin to find abstract uh, forms and faces within and then using uh, markers or watercolor paints to begin to identify features. Um, they may not look very attractive. They might, in fact, look like, um, you know, they've got some anxiety or anguish or, you know, problems going on, and that's perfectly fine. That's what I'm expressing here. I'm finding that face within, and I'm using my hands to manipulate the materials playfully, and while doing that, I'm, I'm noticing what's emerging right here in my hands. So working with your hands, working with found materials, manipulating them in unsuspected ways and, and allowing for the unexpected to come forth and playing with that. So that's really what I'm, what I'm 
playing around with right now. So these these little characters are emerging. At some point, maybe I will um, combine them in a collage or assemblage or work with them actually as um, heads for dolls or puppets or other figures. That's great. Thank you, Matthew. I really like those. I like the way that the, the direction that they're going in. And I think that yeah. also your what <laughs> that's wonderful. I love so it. You can see that. Yeah, I, I can't see them on my own screen, so I guess you oh, can. Right. No, they're great. Um, okay. And I think also what you're saying, it really speaks to something that is essential um, around the anniversary or, or any traumatic event that um, we might experience, and that is like trying to achieve some sort of balance. So even as, as you noted there, even w with uh, recognition that maybe there's some angst or some anxiety contained in uh, the way you're manipulating the material, um, that's still, that's, that's moving that anxiety outside of, your, of yourself, which is really yes. beneficial. And that can really help to, with achieving balance. So um, that's a wonderful thing. I like to, I really love your um, giving permission to play. Um, I think that's a really, I think that's a, a really, a really beautiful um, uh, statement that I think it, that certainly resonates with me. You know, lovely. You know, great. And hopefully that resonates with the uh, people that are watching um, this this live session. Um, so, um, Eileen, would you like to share? Um, your, um, you were doing something similar to that with like found objects, I recall. Yes, yeah, I think um, the, I, I resonate with the sentiment of finding, you know, found objects at home, especially when we're spending so much time at home right now during um, social distancing, which I really appreciate Matthew sharing, um, you know, the, the combination of not only uh, being at the eve of the anniversary of the mass shooting, but also experiencing those other life stressors of social distancing and um, uh, witnessing the social injustices that are occurring. And um, having an opportunity to, to play and create with those found objects has been beneficial for me as well. Um, I have used um, cardboard and broken glass um, to recreate something from uh, destruction. Um, and so I can reiterate Matthew's encouragement of finding, finding those objects to play with and, and recreate and allow us to, um, you know, work through whatever emotions we're experiencing. Another um, art material that I've been using quite a bit is watercolor. And there's lots of different options for watercolor. Um, and I've been just allowing myself to, to witness the flow of the watercolor and, and practice mindfulness um, with that. So I've been really enjoying that process of um, using found objects and watercolors um, in a way that has evolved and changed from you know, my typical use of art materials. And I think Mary had discussed that yesterday, so I um, would love to hear from her again about her process of using the materials in new and different ways. Definitely. Um, also, I think um, just to like reiterate um, the point you made about um, thinking about destruction mm -hmm. and like, find a, cre a creative way to like process uh, destruction. I mean, I, know, I think for me, that's also a, a huge part of like um, healthy coping with distress. And, you know, the particular distress thinking about the anniversary of the, the mass shooting is the, uh, the ultimate, um, one of the ultimate, sadly, uh, acts of like destruction, uh, the taking of, of, of human lives and creating um, you know, coping with that in a creative and healthy way, as opposed to like maybe um, succumbing to like the weight of that feeling of like destruction and, and maybe like, you know, help you move on with your life in a healthy um, way. 
Um, that's, I think, also a key part of like right of, of recovering from trauma is like being able to take the being able to take the trauma and like Matthew is doing like take the trauma in your hands and move that trauma move those feelings and traumas around so you can come out the other the, you can come out the other side of that and you can carry on. Uh, carry on living and develop uh, resilience uh, that way too, which is uh, vital. Um, I, for me, I think the challenge like right now was like trying to um, think through the anniversary uh, in a way that would make sense not only to myself but for members of Healing VB during during the this pandemic too, because I keep I, was, I keep he hearing myself say, well, you know, do the things that you love and. Uh, ca carry on with your life, and I'm like, oh no, uh, a lot of people can't do that right now. Um, so that adds another, a definite, another layer of like stress to what's normal. And so many people that I see is like, what is normal? You know, when do we get back? When do we get back to normal? And that's also recovering from a trauma um, that maybe may not be spoke about explicitly in that statement. When do we get back to normal? But um, it's definitely embedded in a statement like that, usually, maybe unconsciously. Is that when, when, when can I get to the point before this horrible thing happened to me? And the truth is we, we can't get back to the point before. We have to make a new point and a new point and a new point and carry on. And I think that's the, that's the difficulty. I think. And, you know, we are really fortunate in, 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 I think, what we do because it's built built into that process, like working with chaos, working with uh, uh, trauma, working with uh, destruction, and building and re reanimating, re breathing life into new forms. That's, that's like half of the course of like an artistic uh, way of life. So I think Lisa and I have seen um, members of Healing VB to begin to really participate in that and really, uh, wow, they really start to get a hold of that process and like take it and, and people, uh, at least when I've seen people like, you know, bringing work that they're doing at home and they're really excited about this process and it, it's just a, a wonderful thing because people are then, they're, they're doing that creative coping for themselves. They've got, getting some Getting some support to do it, which is a space for self care to attend to that. That's great. So I'm going to uh, ask Mary if she maybe can share her um, artistic process with us and what, what you're working on, Mary. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll also share, um, I'll share some context. Um, so I'm a Virginia Beach native. I grew up in Virginia Beach, um, and I've only lived away from Virginia Beach um, as far as Richmond and uh, Harrisonburg for college. So um, it's definitely a place that I'm grounded in. Um, and you know, one of the things that I um, think about when anniversaries come up is where was I when I heard the news. Um, I think, you know, that's just a natural part of remembering and um, what, you know, what is the context of that? And so um, in the past year, the um, things that have happened to me in context have really increased my awareness of historical traumas and global trauma. Um, me as an individual and, and my perception of how it impacts other individuals and community and society. And um, so last year, um, I woke up in the morning on what was in, in Virginia Beach was May 31st in the afternoon, but was morning in Croatia, June 1st in Croatia. And I was um, with some other faculty and students uh, in a study abroad trip to increase our learning and cultural sensitivity, particularly around historical trauma in the war, um, the homeland war that impacted Croatians. And, and um, so, so already being in, immersed in um, a, a culture of historical trauma that we were learning about, um, I heard, woke up in the morning, checked the news as a part of routine and 
learned about the mass shooting um, and uh, just felt frozen, really. And then immediately went into my crisis worker role of trying to figure out which students were from Virginia. Might they be affected? How was I going to help them um, engage in their day and kind of figure all of those things out? And uh, so one of the things that we promote um, for our students and between each other and faculty for self-care is visual journaling. And um, so everybody visual journal daily during this trip. And um, so the other day, and it says, uh, they're here, what guns, how safe? Why do we worry about being safe? And um, and this, this image was, um, I create a lot of artwork in circles and um, this was kind of uh, like, I don't want to forget remembrance here. So um, one of the things that struck me about being in um, Croatia see this is a close-up of the uh, I created and um, I don't know where the other one is let's just more. This is what it looks like on the page. So it's actually very small on the page, which see in my art, I fill the space and pose all the space. And I think it's interesting that I, I just kind of contained this and um, didn't go back to it in this way in the journal. Um, and so um, I think in, in thinking about that experience, um, a lot of outside of the United States um, ask why why we have uh, concerns for our daily safety or fear and it's because of um, community violence and mass shootings and and so it was like faced in the moment with um, like trying to seek support from from others who really contextually couldn't understand that experience and and so um, that certainly has influenced how I perceive um, kind of the privilege I have living in the United States and people understanding certain contexts and then the challenge we have globally for people to understand the impact of violence, whether single act or multiple act or mass shooting or um, that, that these are a lasting imprints that are on and um, so we can't go back to that pre-trauma state but what we can do is um, is try to create new knowledge. And so um, one of the things I thought that I would do today in my art making to um, remember and uh, and honor um, honor the um, families and survivors and victims of the mass shooting is um, to express through something that that might not be as common art material. So um, I was looking for a brown paper bag in my house and for once I didn't have it, but um, I found uh, I found a coffee bag and um, I, I just felt like it, I needed some brown, um, something brown and earthy. Um, and so what I really um, want to do with this is rip it and hear the tearing like as a, as a way to um, express kind of what's been torn for me um so it, in a moment that can be really em empowering and then i think um you know not everyone has sophisticated art materials and so um, while while we're kind of talking today, I'm going to reform these into something else that represents something about that experience. And um, the only other materials I have with me right now are a Sharpie and some classic crayons. <laughs> um, but um, I'll just work a little bit and um, just let whatever happens happen and just use what I found in my house today 
um, hoping that someone else might look around their house and find something and, and tear it or fold it or color it to express um, something inside and, and get it out. Um, how big is it? What shape is it? Uh, what does it sound like? Maybe as an inspiration. That's uh, um, really interesting, Mary, especially um, on hearing the news when you're in Croatia. Um, obviously, you know, the former part of, the, of Yugoslavia and bereft with traumatic, traumatic memory, you know, embedded everywhere. I saw some of the, I saw a lot of the images that um, you and fa other faculty and students had taken of different buildings there that show the scars of that uh, that tragic um, conflict. So that must have been really, really quite strange to, to hear the news back here in Virginia Beach while being there. So yeah, I mean, I, I, the only I mean I think for me that really like there's a surreality to like something like a mass shooting that is I think I would. Maybe posit that that's independent of like your actual location, because it's just something so surreal. And that, go back to that question: Why, you know, you know, you know, the question of wh where was I when the traumatic event happened? Um, but also, but also the why question for, is a big one for me. That people are still, you know, it, it fuels conspiracy theories and all kinds of different. Um, ways of coping with it. I mean, I think conspiracy theories, sometimes we can laugh at them. Some of them are so so absurd regarding different, you know, cultural events that, you know, certainly can raise a smile. But they're all, they all represent symbolically a way of coping with, uh, with, with a trauma. Where we want answers, we're human beings. We want, we want to know, you know, why, you know, why did, why did this happen? And that's one of, I think, the enduring um, frustrations of coping with like a trauma, especially a mass shooting, like the Virginia Beach mass shooting. As a, you, we we may never know. And certainly, the people that were directly affected and lost loved ones in the in the shooting may may never know the exact um, re reason for that. Um, so yeah, and I think also trauma. Um, Trauma has a memory too, right? A tra traumatic memory can can like start to uh, occupy our body, you know, and that's and that's something that makes uh, this this work and this approach to, to coping creatively and healthy healthily with distress really really vital because we can store our uh, cognitions and our our emotions about a trauma in our body somewhere. Um, we we can experience like a physical uh, discomfort that can uh, even become a chronic condition, and we, you know, really approaching that and 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 staying staying with our feelings can help to prevent that traumatic memory lodging, you know, somewhere within our ego, within our skin, which is what we don't want that to do, you know. So. And obviously, that's easier said than done sometimes, and uh, the effects run run deep. But um, certainly, uh, in, in my experience, and I'm sure you would all echo uh, this: um, getting in the studio and doing this work, and I think everyone everyone's approach that is sharing right now, uh, everyone here uh, is uh, provides a wonderful uh, clue and a and a direction for people. At home to to embark on whether you, as Mary said, whether you have art materials or not. I I tend to go with um, the kindergarten paint. You know, just basic tempera. This is like a dollar or something um, a bottle. You know, this tempera, and it's a humble it's a humble humble material. And I love it because, echoing what Matthew said, it, it allows me to play with uh, with the art material rather, rather than getting, you know, super caught up in like maybe a, an expensive art medium, a professional art medium. So the play is really really important, and uh, 
uh, yeah, the like the Crayola crayons and a, a paper bag and all all these things, toilet rolls. They're all all these found objects are wonderful um, ways of 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 coping and in, and in, and inventing. That's amazing. So I'm going to ask uh, Lisa if you can share some of your artistic process and and creatively coping in a healthy way, that would be great. Thanks. All right, so I'm gonna sort of echo a little bit of what Mary's done. Um, a lot of the times when like anniversaries of events, really traumatic events happen, there's a lot of um, emotions that can come out of nowhere and can be really confusing. And a lot of the times I hear, I don't know why I'm so sad or, really angry for no reason. So one of the ways that I think would be really effective at coping and trying to understand the emotions that you have is to sort of use symbolism with color. You pick a color for whatever type of emotion you have and sort of explore that. Um, and then at the same time to safely express anger using art supplies, um, a really healthy way of doing that is to tear paper up sort of like what Mary was doing. So here I have three different colors of paper, a tan, a white, and a black color piece of paper. And I'm really just gonna think about like the anger and the frustration that I have towards the fact that I had no control over the events that have happened. And just really channeling that so I don't hold it in my body. Because when we hold it in our bodies, it can sort of manifest as other physical symptoms and it can just build on top of each other. So I'm really gonna get into it. Rip all of the colors up. And also highlight that using messy supplies to really get covered in the experience. I'm going to choose red or like an orange color. I'm not really sure if you can see it that well, but yeah. And it's starting to get all over my hands. So just sort of really understanding that trauma and the subsequent emotions that you, that you feel and experience, it's a really messy process. And through art supplies, you can sort of cover yourself with that and explore it a little bit differently instead of just trying to hold on to it and, you know, feel stuck like you're paralyzed by all of the emotions and the experiences that you're thinking of. So that's what I'm doing, is covering myself with the chalk, getting it all over the torn pieces of paper, and then rearranging it to sort of create new meaning and new sense of the experience and the emotions that I'm feeling. So that's what I'm working on, Jeffrey. That's great. I love it. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that definitely resonates with me. Just, um, it's also that process of move, moving really inside what you're doing, right? Really being, a, really being immersed in it. And I think that, that echoes pretty much what every, every, each of you have said, especially, you know, that play and, you know, putting things aside and, and, and giving yourself permission to uh, play, but also giving yourself permission to uh, be be immersed in that process and to be open to what, the direction that it goes, which can be anywhere, and accepting of the direction that you need to go and trusting your own uh, your own uh, direction, trusting trusting your own journey. You know, having having the strength and the resilience to be able to to connect to that and and really uh, get the benefit from doing that experience. Um, so immersion is really, really a good, a really a good thing, definitely. So I'm gonna move over to uh, Susanna. See Susanna working away, hi. Can you share hi. something about your artistic process with us, Susanna? I am. This year I've been working a lot in my visual journal program. I make an image or do it's just been really helpful for me with my writing background to be able to dialogue with that image. This year I started a hundred note cards project. One of my friends started doing it. So her goal was just take a note card and fill one every day. 
So I'm just using colored pencil and an ink pen. And I wrote the name of an emotion inside the center. And then I just made circles and lines in different orders just to express what I was feeling about that particular emotion. So it's just been a helpful process for me to get that emotion out onto the page and just lay on color after color with a colored pencil. So like for using blue for BB Strong, just layering those colored pencils together, making loops dribbling. So it doesn't have to look perfect, but it's just a way to express those emotions. Like we've said earlier, just get them out of the body. And even though I wasn't a resident really of this, of during this instance, it's just really impactful for me to see how the key together after the fact. So it's just an honor to honor the process of dealing with the anniversary. Just, just whatever your process is, trust it, go with it. Going to give you some important information. Exactly. Yes. Trust. Trust your process. Exactly. Definitely. I'm going to move my screen a little bit so that I can show something that I'm working on. So. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're all able to see that, but um, that's how I've been starting the recent collage paintings that I've been doing during the, the COVID. I'll show you one here that's kind of finished. So I'm, um, again, I'm playing, I'm pouring paint, and I'm also using um, earth. I mentioned that to some of you, so I'm pouring taken from my garden, and there's roots and different things in, in this, and I'm adding that to my paintings. And I wanted to um, think about blue today, since blue is the, the color that um, Virginia Beach has identified for the anniversary. So I'm working on just... Um, allowing this process to go and see what happens. And again, I think um, there's, there's definite kind of destruction and, and also construction in these paintings. There's a sense of, um, for me, there's a sense of uh, really honoring human process and the pain of human processing and, and really like trying to make a space for that in, a, in an image, and, but also find the beauty that's embedded in like painful experiences because I think um, I think that's also um, on a personal note that's how I've been able to like move forward after some very stressful difficult periods of my own life moving forward like acknowledging acknowledging that this that acknowledging pain and finding a place for it finding a place where you can um, move it around and it's very similar to what Matthew was saying with the the manipulation of the thing so I'm letting the material just go and spill and splash and then I'll go back in and um, then I'll go back in and like maybe make my, some more discrete like form in a painting um, and almost almost inevitably part of this pro the process I found in these paintings is that there's a tremendous there's a tremendous like a range of uh, human emotions, which is often the case in my paintings. Like even when I try to paint in a very unemotional way, they're always uh, embedded with me. I'm always there, no matter how much I try to might like, say, oh, I'm going to do an intellectual series of of artworks. I'm I'm never absent from that process. So right now, when we're really uh, dealing with an anniversary um, of a mass shooting like we are this weekend, I think we have to, like, we have to move uh, into that and through that so that we can move beyond it rather than, rather than put it aside. And yes, that can, be, um, that can mean that we are going to be feeling 
increasing sadness. We might feel increased, increased levels of distress of that. But honoring our feelings, and that's part of feeling those feelings is part of being able to move on and to find reparation and, and to get to a better, better place. So um, anyone that's struggling today with anything that we've mentioned, um, if that's resonating with anybody that's um, watching this, I would just advise each person to trust their process. Um, do, some, do some basic uh, things that we've covered today. You know, talk about what you're feeling, uh, accept what you're feeling, honor, honor your feelings, uh, honor the memories of people that you may have, have lost in a mass shooting or that you know or were related to if you're grieving. Understand that your grief um, knows no direction, there's no prescription, that it, it can unfold in, in your own terms and in your own time frame. And that's really important to, when we talk about giving ourselves permission, that's the most important part, I think, of giving ourselves permission to respect who we are fundamentally and trust ourselves that we know um, what we need and um, people may help you do all kinds of things but trust your own process but it's definitely also good to talk to people and also to find a commonality right to find that universality of, of human experience so you're not alone if you're struggling with anything this weekend and um and there are people there to help always so uh, use your family use your friends use your loved ones Honor the memory of somebody who um, suffered a, a traumatic event. Uh, honor that memory. Do something. Plant a flower or, or uh, create, a, create a, a memorial for that person or whatever feels right to you. Um, do, do those things. Um, but trust, trust your feelings and, and reach out. And, and go in the studio. Get, some, get a paper bag and some glue, some glue sticks, and some coffee beans, and pasta, and rice, and, and make art. Just be creative and play. And allow your process to be what it needs to be. So I think I'm going to probably uh, stop at that point. I don't know, uh, Mary, if um, we have any comments or anything that we, you feel that we should uh, be responding to any questions or anything like that? I did just scan the comments, and um, so far it's mostly resources that we've posted for folks. And um, so I just you know want to reiterate um, that every everyone who's experiencing something related to the mass shooting, you are having a normal reaction to an abnormal situation, and um, that. That um, when you experience different feelings or thoughts, that what can handle and make space for those, and then you can express express those to others. Um, you can join us at Healing BB by um, the resources posted on our Facebook page, Art EBMS Art Therapy and Counseling, Healing BB and Expressive Arts Project. Those contacts uh, allow you to contact Lisa directly to, um, and you can send one of our Healing DV sessions online. Uh, Jeffrey, um, closing remarks. That's great. Um, I'm going to show also, I know that the city has planned events for this weekend. I know they held a moment of silence uh, yesterday afternoon and the workers at the municipal center like um, only worked a half day. So I, I haven't, um, I'm not aware exactly of ha uh, what the events planned, especially with the current situation. Um, but I know there are a lot of events planned. So if you, anyone out there is interested in participating in that, I know they're making various kinds of memorialized, uh, memorializing displays at the, outside the municipal center, outside the building. So uh, 
if facing it, if facing that situation dire directly and going there is beneficial, do that. If, if that's too stressful, stay away. Uh, again, trust your own process and process your emotions in the way that makes uh, sense to you. You don't, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You know, that's important. Uh, and I know um, forget-me-nots, that we're all wearing blue. I may, managed to dig out my old blue blazer. And uh, I love forget-me-nots. They're one of my favorite flowers. So I took a, uh, I can, I'm not sure, can everyone see those? So I just put a little montage of forget-me-nots together because uh, there's they're such, um, they're such precious, um, tender, beautiful flowers, and they, um, they're, they're a really delightful, and they're a really interesting way of thinking about this week weekend. Um, when I think about symbols for, for big events, um, they often do not personally resonate with me because um, I think we need to find our individual symbol. But the forget-me-nots definitely reson resonated with me, that delicate life form, the fragility, the beauty, the poetry of like a living form. Uh, it's like a wonderful way of, of thinking through, through this, with that, that, those tragic events a year ago. Uh, ooh, so I think that's, <laughs> let me take a deep, deep breath. And I think that's really, all I have at this point, I think I'm <laughs> talked out. So I don't know if anyone, does anyone have anyth anything else or any other comments or suggestions or? If not, I think we'll, we'll end the, our Healing VB session today. I want to thank each of you. Uh, it's we're just an absolute pleasure working with you all, and uh, I love doing this, and uh, Lisa and I will be doing a Healing VB session on Monday, the day after the, the anniversary. So um, hello to all of our, our members that come to Healing VB. If you're watching, uh, we, we miss you, but we'll see you all on Monday. Can't wait. Thank you from me, and all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Stand by, everybody, for one second. And we are clear from Facebook Live.